Good morning. Welcome to Overcast Winnipeg. Yeah, okay. Here's the deal. Today I want to get the blast bags painted. Uh, we're getting off to a little earlier start than we did yesterday. And uh, what I want to do here, I'm, I'm sort of waffling back and forth. Do I spray them or do I brush them? Now, if I was to spray them with the Stanol Res, I would probably want to filter out all the chunks out of this thing. And if you remember when Gabe was here, he gave us these paint filters. And uh, I was thinking, I, if I was to pour the Stanol Res into the filter, is it going to just sort of, most of it stick to the sides of the filter, or is it going to eventually drip through? And then we have the problem with the fact that this Stano Res, it dries very quickly, very quickly. And, and the, uh, I, I think that probably uh, it would almost thicken, you might say, by the time most of it had slowly seeped through this very fine mesh. So then I was thinking, well, how could I make it go through faster? Uh, and... Uh, I, I remember, oh, it must have been a year, maybe two years ago, I put uh, a piece of, of uh, tissue paper in the bottom of a large syringe and used, tried to use that as a filter. I, I can't remember if it was for cyanol res or what it was I was using it for. But what, what happened was that the pigment in, in the paint slowly plugged up the filter. So the filter was just a little bit too fine. I think that something like this is, is, is coarse enough that it's going to take the chunks that would plug up the airbrush out, but allow the, the pigment of the paint to pass through. However, next thing, you know in your, in your uh, washer, like down, most of us have an automatic washer for, for washing our clothes, and there's the spin dryer. And the spin dryer is basically a centrifuge and it extracts the water out of your clothes or a lot of it anyway. In fact, I remember one time, uh, years and years ago, I saw a spin dryer that, that I think it was in a laundromat and it operated at an extremely high, high RPM and it extracted, I would say 99% of the water out of the clothes. Yeah, it was it was amazing. They almost they almost felt dry when you took them out. Well, they were they were down. Let's face it. But anyway, that was the idea. It took less time than an ordinary an ordinary dryer. Okay, enough about that. So I was sort of you know thinking this morning. You know, I could I could make up a, a spin dryer and or or a, a centrifuge, and uh, it, it'd be kind of fun. I used to do a lot of that kind of stuff years ago, but I don't want to take the time now. Um, but there is that thought, you know, and then I thought, well, may maybe what I'll do is I, you know, w w let's, let's say I, I, there's not very much left in here. It's probably only, uh, I'm guessing a, a quarter full. I've, I've used quite a bit. I think I painted the, the, uh, bike seat, my homemade bicycle seat with this stuff. So, uh, <laughs> I wasted a lot of it. I, I could order more, you know, I, Amazon sells it. I mean, th I think this came, this came from on Amazon, yeah. Anyway, uh, what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, mount our little... Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Marine, I agree. Those look like little shoes. <laughs> They're like little Barbie shoes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that that's all I can see now. Every time I see these, I see little I see little little shoes. <laughs> okay. Um so I think I can mount our, our little blast bags onto onto maybe the ends of little s sticks like this so that I can brush it brush it properly. You know what? I think what I should do is recompose and actually do it on camera because I sometimes have a real hard time describing what it is that I want to do. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, yeah, let's get at it. 
Okay, here's the plan. And this is actually going to be the first one here. Put this at just a slight angle. Like that. And then we'll take Tony's tweezer here. And we will turn our blast bag upside down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some quick setting here. Hey. So there's something going on here. Make life interesting. I'll try this again. I guess what I guess what happened was I tried to pull the applicator down so that I could uh you know, this evaporates really fast here. So, in fact, I think it's evaporated already. So let me wet the end of this. That's, that'll be the better way to do this. Okay, now, try and get it at the right angle. And just put a little pressure on there. There we go. Now let, we'll just let that dry. And the idea is I'll be able to stick this down into a styrofoam block now. And it will, uh, I think probably I, I should have these at a better angle. Uh, the this, the uh, sprue at more of a 45 degree angle. Because right now it's, well I guess it's, it's I, can turn, I can turn this around. You know, who says I can't just hold it in my fingers and, and just paint it like this. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just do the rest of them, <clears throat> but first, do de do de do de do de do de do de do do de do 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 de do do de do de do de do 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 so while our blast bags are uh, hardening onto the pedestals, what are we going to do here? You know, there's really only a very small portion of this that I actually need. Um, Now I remember when Gabe was here he said he'd send me the link to where I can get more of these but I imagine I can probably Google it and get to have the same thing. Now because when I'm dripping this in I don't want this to come flipping out maybe we should uh, use the helping hands here, right? Makes sense to me. Now I'm going to have to maybe readjust this a little bit here. Okay, so this will come down and just sort of clamp on here in the right place. I'm going to just push stop here and get everything readjusted. I think you can see what it is I'm trying to do. Okay, I just shook this up real good in the paint shaker. Uh, so it's about as uh, mixed as it's going to get. It also probably broke loose a lot of other dried chunks and so on, but I'm not too worried about that because I know that uh, Gabe's filter here is going to probably take care of it, I hope. Now, speaking of Gabe, he would know the answer to this, but I don't. But maybe Google does. Probably about 25 years ago... Oh, Google Google heard me say something. Uh, don't, don't anybody speak. Don't anybody ask a question. Okay, anyway... Uh, about uh, 25 years ago, I wanted to know, and I don't know why I wanted to know this, but I wanted to know uh, if you jumped in a hole and kept accelerating at the same speed, now of course you, you wouldn't, 
but I mean, let's say you jumped in into a hole and you and it went right through the earth, so to speak. <laughs> well, that wouldn't work. But anyway, uh, how how long would it take you to accelerate to the speed of light? So I knew that there was probably a formula for this, but I couldn't remember what it was. So uh, I think it was my nephew told me it was 32 feet per second per second. I remember that from years and years ago. And I calculated that it would take approximately one year for you to accelerate to the speed of light if you kept accelerating at that same rate. Now, speaking of centrifuges, there's got to be a formula similar that has probably something to do with diameter or radius times RPM times something else. And I think probably Google will know. Now, this is going to be new to me. I haven't already done this and know the answer, so we're going to find it out together. Okay, let's try this uh, and see if I can word this just right so that uh, she can understand what I'm saying. Okay, I, I think it's a she. Uh, hey, Google, what is the formula to determine the, gra the force of gravity in a centrifuge? She's thinking. I, I think I think I've stumped her. Uh, I'm going to have to reword this. Yeah, I've I've stumped her here. Um, model kit stuff, table talk. I've missed it. Sorry, Jason. Okay. Uh, We're just not getting anywhere here today, are we? Okay, I'll work on this later. It's not that important because I'm not going to make a centrifuge, I don't think. Uh, let's just uh, carry on here. Maybe I'll have to just recompose a little bit. Maybe I'll, I'll, uh, I'll zoom in on here so we can watch what's going going on. Maybe I'll try and come in more from the from the side a little bit. Just in case. You know Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law says you're not going to spill anything if you've got a piece of paper underneath to keep it off your cloth. So I don't want to spill anything. Okay, here we go. It's going through. It's going through. You know what? I think there's lots there. Let's just leave the rest the rest in here. Maybe there's there was more in here than I thought there was. Okay, so we are we are still dripping through, I think. No, it stopped. Okay, so that, that last little bit that's in there, we probably, probably a, a quarter of a milliliter, but uh, you do lose some. It stays in the bottom of the filter. Okay, these filters work better than I thought they did, uh, or would. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Gabe. Okay, let's try and keep this right side up now so it doesn't get all over the lid. Yeah, that works good. Okay, now I, I, I could actually use this in the airbrush and I wouldn't need to worry now about, you know, about it getting plugged up. Uh, oh, uh, speaking of airbrushes, uh, our, our uh, friend Peter from Oscale Modeling bought a new airbrush and I believe he's got the same Iwata that I have. I should try this in the... Uh, in my eye water just for old time's sake. Uh, on the other hand, I'm too lazy to have to clean it up afterwards. I think, I think I'm just going to give the, our little, uh, I almost said shoes, um, blast bags, 
uh, uh, two coats. I'm just going to use the airbrush. I'm going to just, I'll do one or two maybe on camera and I'll do the rest off camera. They, they should be fairly dry now. I don't think the brush is going to break them off the end of the pedestals. Okay, we're going to try this again. I cannot believe that she didn't know. Uh, okay, I'm going to speak clearly and I'm going to try and concentrate on what I'm asking here because I probably didn't word it quite right before. But here we go. Hey Google, what is the formula for determining the force of gravity in a centrifuge? According to Benchtop Lab Equipment, BT Lab Systems, G equals XRXS2, where G is the relative centrifugal force, R is the radius of the rotor in centimeters and S is the speed of the centrifuge in revolutions per minute. The follow table is a simple reference for common rotor sizes and their RCF values in units of times gravity. Okay, I think I can probably figure this out, just for the fun of it. But it's not important, so I'm not going to do it now. Okay, time is marching on here, and I think we're about ready to try and make some sort of a mess, so maybe I better put this back. Sounds like I hear a lawnmower. I didn't, I thought the grass had stopped growing. Okay. Um... Yesterday, I phoned a Honda dealer in a uh, little town just uh, east of Winnipeg here. Actually, it's a small city. It's called Steinbeck. And I phoned the Honda dealer there and uh, find out if they were going to be, you know, bringing in any Honda Rebels. And... Uh, I talked to somebody there by the name of J.R. That's, that's fairly thinned out, isn't it? Well, see, it might take three coats. Oh yeah, this is, this is really thinned out. Maybe I don't have enough on my brush. Or maybe, maybe I should be, maybe I should be hooking up the airbrush. I wonder, should I maybe be doing this with the airbrush? The airbrush would work a lot better with this thinned out style res. Um, I, I think that's the way I should go here. I'll just try another one there. It's not going on well, is it? Um, it could be that maybe what I should be doing is soaking soaking this uh, these pieces in vinegar because I'm seeing what appears to be like oily spots maybe from my fingers. Um, well, let's uh, grab another one here. So anyway, I talked to JR at the Honda dealer out there. Told him what I was interested in. And uh, he said that probably in around December, they might be getting uh, an order in of the 2024s. And uh, so that would be kind of nice because I think that the I think that in 2024, from what I've read, if it's true, they've upped the horsepower a little bit. In other words, I think right now it's around 87 horse or something like that, and they've upped it to 101. That's what I read, but you can't always, you know, re rely on what you read on the internet. And, uh, you know, it could be after I do two coats here, this is going to look all right. Yeah. Yeah, I think two or three coats and it'll probably look all right. Um, so I I told him what I what I wanted, and he said that from what his his uh, information was, they're going to be getting one in uh, pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. In other words, just a bare bones one with the uh, automatic transmission. It's called a, a, a DCT double clutch. Uh, transmission and uh, so anyway we'll, we'll see how it goes he's, he's got my phone number and email and so on 
So ho hopefully uh, he kind of indicated that now I have first dibs on it because I have sort of got my name in, but he doesn't have any of my money, so you know how it goes. Um, you know, I used to know a lot of people from Steinbeck. Uh, years ago, there was a, a Canadian Air Force base, and it was called Cairnport. It was pretty much right in the middle of Canada. Now, I had occasion to be in Cairnport for an entirely different reason. And uh, I was there for quite a while, actually. And uh, when I was there, I met a fellow from Steinbeck. His name was Royden Jans. And we weren't what you'd call friends. We were just more or less acquaintances because we both came from the same kind of background. And uh, we were both interested in aviation. So we, we knew each other. But anyway, some years later, uh, Royden was flying his plane over Steinbeck. And I believe it was a Cessna 180 or a 185. Now this, this you got to remember, this happened oh, 40, over 40 years ago. And uh, it was in the wintertime and he was on skis. And uh, I concluded from, you know, what, what witnesses said that possibly one of the skis, or maybe both, had tilted forward and dug into the air and pulled the plane down because, from what I remember, witnesses said that the plane just sort of nosed right down into the ground. Well, you know, you, you just don't do that when you're flying. Um, so, he, he unfortunately, he was killed. It was quite a shock to me because I, I knew the guy. I used to know a lot about other people from Steinbeck as well. Um, but anyway, J.R. is from Steinbeck. Remember J.R. In, in, the, in the Dallas series? I remember when the, 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 uh, there, was, there was one, uh, I was going to say uh, episode, but it was the uh, series finale or, or the season finale, and J.R. got shot. And everybody was wondering... Who shot J.R.? <laughs> anyway, this guy in, at the cycle store is uh, name is J.R. So I'm hoping J.R. is going to be able to help me here. And uh, well, it's kind of interesting the the uh, the new Honda Rebels, the the 1100. CC Rebel is going to allegedly have 101 horsepower and the airplane that I learned to fly in only had 100 horsepower. I learned to fly in a Cessna 150 and uh, it was a nice little plane. It actually, the empty weight of it wasn't a whole lot, a lot more than the Honda Rebel. Yeah, th you know what, th this is going to paint up okay with a second coat, I can tell by looking at it. So, yeah, now how can I get these here? Yeah, no, I, I need a 100 horsepower motorcycle, like I need uh, a hole in the head, as the saying goes. Well, we'll see what happens. I can't remember how many horsepower the last Honda was that I, motorcycle I had. That was a... I guess I could look it up. It was a, a Honda 500cc four-cylinder. It was known as the Honda 504. It was quite, quite popular. But that was also a long time ago. That was back in the around 1980, 1981 maybe. Something like that. And I, 
think I might have mentioned that I, I needed the money worse than I needed a motorcycle back then. And if, you might be wondering, well, if you had a motorcycle back in 19, in, in 1980, why is it that now you have to get your learner's license updated? And, uh, well, I guess you know how I was writing it, right? So, but we won't talk about things that I did when I was young and foolish. Now I'm older and a little bit more cautious. Yeah. I'll let these dry and I'll give them a second coat. And we'll take a good look at them tomorrow because I got a feeling that I've just about done everything I want to do here today. Okay. All right, that, that one actually painted up really nice. Whoops, got it on my finger. Uh, yeah, that, that one came out really nice. I, maybe I wasn't putting it on thick enough on these on these first ones. Let's try not to drop it here now. There we go. Okay, yeah, I think, uh, uh, well, I'll keep you all posted how this thing goes with uh, the uh, Steinbeck Honda dealership and uh, yeah JR said he'd let me know and uh, at, at the moment it's it's either the way I'm feeling right now about a motorcycle it's either that or the Yamaha I think it's called a 300 scooter which is you know it's pretty sucky compared to the motorcycle but it's a whole lot better than what I'm riding right now, so. Okay, boy that sun already is really, look at that. I gotta, I gotta scrape it off. That's, that's really good primer, really good. I better get it out of this brush before, uh, before it hardens. Because I, uh, I think you have to use uh, isopropyl 99%. I don't think, uh, I don't think uh, Windex will dissolve that. We've gone through this before. You know what? Thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we're going to see you tomorrow.